today in the Monty Python uh, series. Now for something completely different. It's not actually completely different, but it's, it's a variant of what we've talked about. So heretofore in the class, we've primarily talked about Java concurrency, primarily focusing on concurrency and parallelism features that are available in Java 8. So obviously talked about streams and Lambda expressions, method references, functional interfaces, parallel streams, completable futures, fork join pool. So at this point, we're sort of done with the Java 8 concurrency and parallelism stuff, uh, though you still have the assignment to go. But the original title of this class was, you know, Introduction to Android Concurrent and Parallel Programming. And so we really haven't talked much about the Android part, other than the fact that you've been using Android as kind of the environment in which to do the work. So now, with the bulk of our remaining time in the semester, we're going to start covering Android. And you'll see how this will give you a bigger, more full stack, as we'll see in a second, view of everything in which your concurrent and parallel stuff nestles. Uh, and then you'll get a chance to learn more about what Android is about and what the architectural components are and so on. So as we'll see in more detail shortly, in a lot more detail, Android is designed as a so-called layered architecture. How many people here are familiar with Android's layered architecture, just out of curiosity? OK, so maybe about a fifth of people. So we'll, we'll go through it. I'll go through the overall view quickly, and then I'll go into more detail for each of the pieces so you'll get a better understanding. And um, as you'll see, there's, a, there's an operating system kernel, which is a variant of Linux. There's a set of middleware layers. It's kind of infrastructure middleware layers dealing with abstracting away from the hardware, a whole bunch of open source libraries, largely written in C and C++, and then the Android runtime, which uh, has a bunch of different things in it. A lot of the stuff we've been talking about up to this point are known as the core libraries portion of the Android runtime. And then there's something called an application framework layer, and this is where sort of the Android-specific stuff starts to come along. A lot of the stuff in the layer underneath it is a bit more generic. There's Android-centric stuff here too, of course, but this is really Android-specific up here. And then finally, we have all the various applications, or as we would call them, apps. Uh, and these include things if you're an Android user. How many people here, by the way, have Android as a phone? OK, so most people have Android. So the stuff that you use every day, right? So like your browser and your email and calendar and the phone dialer and so on, those are all apps, and not surprisingly, they layer on top of everything underneath. So the purpose of understanding all this stuff is to be a more effective full stack developer, right? So that's your full stack. And the reason for doing this, why, why on earth would anybody want to be a full stack developer? What's the benefit of being a full stack developer? Bruce. Right, so one, one reason is to have a more robust view of the whole, the whole enchilada, rather than just knowing how to, for example, write an app. Malcolm. Absolutely, and, and why would anybody want to do that? Sure. So what? I'll certainly say you know what you're talking about, but, but why do people want to know what they're talking about? What's the value for you? Right. <laughs> well, or get a better job. <laughs> you can probably get a job knowing how to do JavaScript programming, you know, at the very top layer of something. That, it's not hard to find a job, but finding a job where you get to do interesting things, you keep yourself gainfully employed over time, knowing how more than one layer works is, is very useful for that. And that's also something you'll see a lot if you, if you look at um, job advertisements, especially at companies that are doing really cool, like cutting edge stuff, having that full stack awareness is, is valuable. All right, another piece of the puzzle here, which will help us rationalize the early intro part, is that Android is, is rather vast. Uh, so there's thousands of classes. It's, it's amazing how much stuff there is in Android. Of course, much of the stuff in Android depends very heavily on the underlying Java classes and the Java platform portion. That's really the core of everything. That's why we focused on that first in, in many ways. But Android also adds other stuff in addition to that, even though it all fundamentally depends on Java, at least at the moment. 
So we're going to kind of give a bird's eye view of all this stuff, and we're going to focus primarily, once we get past the introduction here, on the main components that are the architectural elements in the Android platform. And these will be activities, services, broadcast receivers, content providers, and intents. Those are the basic building blocks. There's, of course, lots and lots more other stuff as well. Um, at first, we're just going to talk about concepts, and then later I'll show you a bunch of examples. So this is more just to give you a holistic perspective on things. If you want to just, if you just want to write an app, right? If you just want to build an app that, that does something like what we showed for the, um, the driver program for all the various image crawlers, you don't have to know all these different layers. However, knowing these layers will make your solution much more efficient. And if you, if you knew what we had spent behind the scenes getting all that stuff to work and optimizing it and tuning it, we spent a lot of time you know, talking up and down the different layers here and figuring out how to, where the bottlenecks were, what was taking a long time. And, and even in some cases, we haven't quite finished optimizing everything, but it's a lot better than it was when it started. And that's because we took a holistic view. All right, so that's just a really quick overview at a high level of, of what we're going to be covering here very shortly.